There's like the part of me that's like, I'm trying to make fetch happen. Did not pick that up. Not that I couldn't read murder, cause I'm fine with that. Like murder is my happy place. You can put a pin in that for next year. Like I'm saving him for a special occasion. I don't know what my special occasion is. I should have picked this book up in the summer when I was blowing off my writing. Okay, here's another failure. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. I'm trying to get my energy up here. <laughs> so we are gonna talk about one of my biggest failures of 2023, not clickbait. I did 23 and 23. I somehow in my pea brain thought that I could turn myself into a somewhat scheduled reader and I kind of sort of failed at this project. So I've done my math. I've got my list of books. I was not going to add to my shame by hauling 23 books out of all their respective locations so we could sit and cry about them. But I have a 43% success rate which is not the worst, but technically still a complete failure. Um, it's probably better than my neck alley score is, but that's a video for a different day. So anyway, I had a great time back in December of 2022, planning a list of books that I wanted to read in 2023. So I feel like it should go without saying that I wanna read all the books. And there were certain books that I wanted to prioritize for one reason or another in 2023. And I really just didn't do a very good job of doing exactly that. I didn't prioritize them. So by no means an excuse, but I think I am reminded that I am moody. I probably could have helped myself out a bit if I had actually gathered all the books into one central location, which <laughs> I kind of did. But then for some reason, I, I didn't bring them all into one location. So they were not on my physical visual radar and I'm super visual. And also I pulled some of them and put them on a shelf in my bedroom, which amongst other things has old series, all of my nonfiction books, everything I read last year is still sitting in my bedroom bookshelf and everything I've read this year is added to that bookshelf. And then I have like some writing books and journals and basically I stuck at least half of these books in a location that I don't actively look at <laughs> when I'm trying to find a book to read. I basically stuck them on a shelf full of books that I've already read. So anyway, I still wanna read them, but I didn't get to them. So I thought we could go through, talk about what I haven't read. And I'm saying this, I'm a mood reader. I don't do well trying to schedule a TBR. This is a failed project of mine. And then out of the other corner of my mouth and in the not so distant future, when I get it together, you're gonna see me filming a video of, I think I wanna try and do 12 and 24 <laughs> to do one a month. So it's not gonna necessarily be the balance of what's on this sheet, but there's like this part of me that loves compiling a list, loves compiling the books that I wanna read. And then um, I don't always do them, but I'm doing 10 before the end. There's 10 days left to 2023. I have finished six of the books. I wanna say six, at least five. I think I finished the sixth one. I finished The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. So anyway, I can kind of sort of quasi stay to it, but then I've also pivoted off of it. So anyway. I think I might try and do 12 and 24, don't judge me. So you can judge me for, let's talk about 23 and 23. Okay, the first book, and I am I printed out the list of what I originally talked about, so I'm just reading them in the order that I originally talked to you guys about them. And we're gonna start off with a whole bunch of books I haven't read. So Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I totally wanna read this. I did pick up Hellbent from Book of the Month and I have started neither of them. And I'm gonna say, I think this is an intimidation factor for me. A lot of hype around it, fantasy elements, which is not my sweet spot, which scares me a little bit. And I know all stories are good stories. I'm not avoiding it because it's fantasy, but I'm intimidated because it's fantasy. But it's Dark Academia and Secret Society, so I still want to read it. So I'm not getting rid of any of these books, except for maybe one. We'll see. Okay, book number two, Friends Like These by Kimberly McCreet. I have started and stopped this book multiple times back to 2022 because this is a book about a group of friends who get together for a reunion to discuss past things and present things and there's murder in it which on a very 
overarching 5,000 foot view is what I'm writing about. And every time I try to pick this book up, I immediately start to think about my own book and I don't want to unintentionally have her ideas in my head. And I also don't want <laughs> to feel bad about what I'm writing. So I'm back in a writing groove. I should have picked this book up in the summer when I was blowing off my writing. But anyway, that's why I haven't read that one. Again, Rachel by Marion Keys. I reread Rachel's Holiday two years ago in anticipation of this book coming out. Still haven't read it. No excuse, not at all for this one. So the next one, which we can have a great conversation about is The Snowman by Joe Nesbo. I realize I should, because I'm definitely giving you guys visual aids here. So if you have been with me for a while, you might know my long and sordid past with The Snowman by Joe Nesbo. So I have never read a Joe Nesbo book. I definitely own a few of them. This is part of the Harry Hole series, which I think it's like book like seven or eight ish. Check down below so I fact check myself. But this one is Winter Vibes. It is a serial killer book. This serial killer basically like leaves a snowman on your front lawn as his calling card that he's coming for you. <laughs> or maybe he came for you. I'm not totally sure because I haven't made it. I made it over 100 pages into the book. So I originally was going to read it winter 2022, I think. And I started to feel all this pressure. It's Nordic Noir. It's beloved. It's part, like I said, it's part of a series. And I definitely think I psyched myself out and it intimidated me. And I didn't read it the first time. And I am not one of those people where I can only read a seasonal book in a season, but it just felt right. And then I got two in my head and then I didn't read it. So I put it back on this list, swearing up and down that I was going to read it in winter 2023. And I picked it up in February and I got over 100 pages into it but I could not get into this book. And I think I was again, too far into my head. And again, not an excuse, but hindsight being 2020, I was actively looking for a new job. I definitely was not my best self at multiple points throughout 2023. And I think it was just, it was like too hard of a book. Like I definitely needed something, not that I couldn't read murder, cause I'm fine with that. Like. Murder is my happy place. You guys know it's my comfort food, but I think it was, it was like too much book. So I have soft DNF'd it again and I'm going to get to it eventually. I make no promises and I almost feel like it's that thing where like, as soon as you stop chasing it, it will come to you. So I'm going to stop chasing the snowman and we'll see how we do together. But <laughs> it's like third time's going to be the charm with the snowman. I promise another big truck going by. If you guys have been watching my videos, you know I'm like in the land of trucks here right now too. So deliveries abound. But can I be a pet peeve for half a minute? I am waiting for three packages to show up. You know what's not working today? The post office's tracking site. Everything's coming via the post office and their tracking site's not working. Sidebar. Okay, next up, All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. I read it in April and I loved it. True crime vibes missing person case in the past case in the present so wonderfully dark i totally enjoyed this book i'm so happy i read it it was so good another one that was so so good is you love me by carolyn kempness i read this in march this is book three in the joe goldberg series i obviously wanted to get to this before book four came out this year which i also read right after i got it and i loved it I loved, not to spoiler alert anything, I'm not spoiling plot, I'm just spoiling my feelings, but I loved book four almost as much as book one, like as close to as possible. Then I would say three, then I would say two. I feel like I need to reread Hidden Bodies because there's a part of me that thinks I went into that so high off of you that it felt like a letdown to me. I feel like maybe I'm being extra judgy about that book, but either way, I did read book number two or book number three, You Love Me, and I loved it. So there you go. And then I read You're Invited by Amanda Jayatisa. I just read this in December, so I have not reviewed it on my channel yet, but you guys will see that in an upcoming video. So that was a destination wedding in Sri Lanka. We have a woman who goes to the wedding, it is her childhood best friend is marrying her ex-boyfriend. 
and she's not feeling jazzed about that. So the blurb on the front is kind of like, the only thing worse than like your best friend marrying your ex-boyfriend is being accused of her murder. So we get dual timelines, great wedding vibes, really like, I love the Amanda Jayatisa like dark voice. So more, again, more on that's coming in my December wrap up, but I did read it. I made a point, I wanted to read that one. I was trying to do, part of this list was about reading books I own by authors before their next book came out because I'm trying to kind of, <laughs> I can hear you guys from, you haven't even seen this yet and I can hear you laughing. I'm trying to get on top of some of the books that I own by authors that I love before I buy more books by authors that I love. So you can put a pin in that for next year. So anyway, I read that. Uh, Failed Miserably at The Tenant by Katrine Engberg. I absolutely picked this book up at least during series September. I don't know if I picked it up before that and I promptly put it back down. I just, I wasn't in the mood. I wasn't in the mood. So do I have three books in that series? I do, and I haven't read any of them. And then The Stranger Diaries by Ellie Griffiths, first book in this series. Definitely thought about it. Definitely didn't pick it up. I feel like series September also kind of intimidated me. I definitely have at least three, if not four books in this series. <laughs> God, uh, I've heard great things about it, have not read it yet. And then this one I feel like is shocking to me. So Death Notice by Todd Ritter, first book in a three book series, AKA Riley Sager. This was his original debut. This was his Todd Ritter, that's who he really is, debut. It's a three book series. I have scrounged and found all three books through online thrifting and I haven't read any of them. And I think there's a part of me that is trying to preciously savor like savor them which is really really dumb it's like not using like not wearing your good jewelry or, or wearing your good purse or like wearing your good clothes like, like I'm saving him for a special occasion I don't know what my special occasion is but didn't pick that one up but I did pick up Faithful Place by Tana French so this is book three in the Dublin Murder Squad series I am going to film a video about series I would like to complete so I have like the realistic, which is the Dublin Murder Squad series. So I've read three, there's three to go. And then there's gonna be the unrealistic, like the K Scarpetta series, where I think I still have like 15 books. So like someday, someday, but anyway. So I did read this one. I talked about this in my November wrap up, not my favorite. I loved the first two books. I didn't dislike Faithful Place, but I was, it's a dual timeline book and I was struggling with the past timeline even though it's completely relevant to the present storyline. But I kept, it like it took me out of the story too much. I wanted to be in the present day investigation and I felt too taken out of it. So still great writing, still great dark humor. Frank Mackey's a great main character. I loved him in the likeness, but struggled slightly with that one, but still read it, still glad I did. Next up is Kismet by Amina Akhtar. Did not read this. This is like a, I feel like it's like a dark and twisted um, wellness spa. So Jennifer Hillier has blurbed it and recommended it. Kate from Killing the Tea has talked about it. It's not even a big book. So I feel like I should have gravitated towards it because I feel like there were definitely points during the year where I needed a win. And some of the books on this list were chunkers, which definitely intimidated me. So again, no excuse on that one. And then I have The Dead Season by Tessa Wiegert, which I read in March. This was also book three in a series. And I read it and very much enjoyed it. So I am, why am I saying I read this in March? That's not right. That is right. The Dead Season's the second book. Oh my gosh. Dead Wind is the third one, right? Yes, The Dead Season is the second book. Dead Wind is the third book, which I read later in the year. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Okay, I almost lost it for a minute there. Okay, book number two in the series, read it. Also read book number three, which is not on this list, but I'm gonna give myself a point for that anyway. So there we go. Okay, then we have The Craftsman by Sharon Bolton. Did not read this. I did 1000% buy the second book in this series. And I, the... It was like, it's kind of chunky. It's a serial killer book, which again, should scratch every itch that I have and just didn't do it for no good reason. 
the Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I know there's been some mixed feedback on this book and I think I let that get too in my head. And when I was looking at it, I just, I never want to be disappointed by it. I mean, <laughs> let's pause for a minute. Uh, I never want to be disappointed by a book. Who does? Who's like, you know what would be great? I, I hope this book really lets me down. But I think this is why, mm, and not saying that just because other people didn't like it doesn't mean I won't, but I, anytime I went to pick it up, I couldn't get that out of my head. So I felt like I was entering it from a place of negativity. I'm never going to forget that people didn't like it. I just need to get past it. So when the mood strikes, it's gorgeous. I, I know that Lucy Foley has a book coming out in 2024. So I'm really going to try to read books I have before I buy the new book by the author. Some of these I just have one book to read. Like my next friend is The It Girl by Ruth Ware. So I wanted to read this before Zero Days came out. I did. I read this in June. I really enjoyed this book. And I think I was mixing up this and the Paris apartment for a beat where, or I was, I don't know. In my head, I thought people didn't enjoy the It Girl. I loved it. And then I went and looked at reviews afterwards. And then I talked to a few people and everyone I talked to was like, I don't remember people saying that. So I made that up in my head, but that was a past and present timeline, a murder at Oxford, and the group of friends who were friends with April, who was the it girl who got murdered in Oxford, coming together in the present, and I just loved it. I'm a huge Ruth Ware fan, but I a thousand percent did not read <laughs> Zero Days, despite pre-ordering it and having it on my shelf. I never read it, so I will. I will, because she has a new book coming out next summer as well. So there you go. Okay, my next failure is Bloodline by Jess Lowry. No reason. Absolutely no reason. It is... I, I don't want to say I don't know where it is. It's definitely not with some of the books that are in my bedroom. I definitely did a reshuffle at some point during the year. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. It's here. I haven't gotten rid of anything. I mean, I've unhauled some books, but not this. But didn't read it. Didn't read it. So next up, let's move on. I've got a couple wins here. So I have The Woman Inside by E.G. Scott. I just read this in December. You guys will hear all about it. This is a husband-wife mistress story. Like you think you know, but you don't know. And it's definitely twisty and twisted. And I had a great fun time with this book. So stay tuned. I'm glad I read it. And then The Butcher and the Wren by Elena Urquhart. I read this in January. This was my first book. And I was like, I am starting this thing strong. I really enjoyed that book. Another serial killer book. My phone is vibrating next to me. Another serial killer book. And this one definitely freaked me out. It's a small book. It packs a big punch. Books with a serial killer point of view in it definitely freak me out. Like I, I do enjoy giving myself a good scare. I really, really liked this book. I hope there is more in that series. Really, really liked it. And then I did read The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell in September, part of series September. So this was book number two in The Family Upstairs. Yeah, The Family Upstairs. And then The Family Remains. I loved it. I really did. A lot of the same characters from book number one. Some new characters are introduced in book number two. There is new story. There's continuing story. I very much enjoyed this one. You guys know I'm a massive Lisa Jewell fan. Had a great time with this book. And then we're going to close this out with three more no-goes. So the first is Hidden Pictures by Jason Reculak. I had all the ideas of like reading this during spooky season. And then I just like forgot about it. Mm, that's terrible, but didn't read it. The next one is Look Closer by David Ellis. That is definitely up there, um, sitting next to The Buried by Sharon Bolton, which is book number two in the Craftsman series. I have heard from so many people that this David Ellis book is very bingeable. It's like, it's also like two inches thick, so did not pick that up. And then the final one, no pun intended, is The Final Girls Support Group by Grady Hendrix. So... I didn't try. I did try How to Sell a Haunted House because I got an e-arc of that. And that did not work for me. And I think, and again, I feel, I feel bad being like, 
this isn't the book for me, but I feel like he's not the author for me. I feel like I just don't get it. Like we just don't, I'm not his person. I don't think I'm his person. So this is the one book I think I might, I don't want to unhaul it without trying it. I think, I, and I, I'm so not good at a try a chapter tag. For me, that's like not, I don't know, that like doesn't help me in so many ways. So we'll see, but I didn't even try. I didn't even try. <laughs> so there you have it. There you have it. So I read 10. I read 10 out of 23 with one DNF. Wait, did I count the DNF as one? I totally counted the DNF as one. Oh my gosh. I did not. I'm such a loser. <laughs> I'm such a loser. I just figured this out. My number's even worse than I thought it was. I have a 39% success rate. I just, like, I wrote the months that I tried to do them and then I counted how many. So, nine out of 23. Which makes me think that a 12 and 24 could yield me better success. <laughs> So I don't know yet what I'm going to pick with the exception of one. This is totally viewer inspired. So no one will miss her by Kat Rosenfield. I bought this before I bought You Must Remember This, which is her book that came out in 2023, which I read in 2023, which I totally loved. Apparently this is like real messed up. So originally I was like, ooh, let me just read this now. But I'm like, no, stay on my 10 before the end, which is actually 11 books and save this for next year. Cause I want to put it on my 12 and 24 and then it'll be an instant win. <laughs> I'm stacking the deck. It's not like I'm going to make money off of this. You know, like it's just, oh, I can't even get it back on the shelf. It's just me having fun with me. So this is definitely going to be on it. And other than that, I don't know. So. I will leave you with that. And I'm not even teasing you on purpose. I literally just haven't made the list yet. So I don't know what's going to make the list. So I will be back with that video. I will be back with other videos. I am very grateful you guys are here to watch the madness that is this. And let me know, have you, do you do these kinds of lists? Do you succeed at them? Do you just not bother? You know, I don't make TBRs. I'm not like, there's like the part of me that's like, I'm trying to make fetch happen, but I just really enjoy compiling <laughs> lists and groups of books. And I get so distracted by bright new shiny things and squirrel. So I did, I mean, again, there's 10 days left in the month. I'm currently reading a 2024 arc and a 2023 new release. So numbers again, asterisks, but my current math is 55% of the books I read this year were 2023 new releases. So I definitely paid way more attention to what was new and shiny than I probably ever have before. So that definitely took away from this list. So let me try and talk loud over the truck. And then let me call it a video. So stay tuned for more you guys. Let me know about these books. If the ones I haven't read, do you think any of them should like be a top priority for next year? I don't know. Let me know. Some of them I'm a little less excited about than I used to be. Mm, actually, that's not fair. I'm just, there, there's like intimidation and just other factors at play. So, okay, I'm going to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I almost was like, love you. <laughs> I feel like I'm hanging up the phone. I will see you guys in another video. Take care, everybody. Bye.